been a moment of uh, adaptation for Ethno, I think, you know, because of the COVID crisis, a lot of physical Ethno camps had to be cancelled and this was extremely disappointing from the organizational point of view, but also from the point of view of young musicians who are looking for opportunities to connect and to, to perform and to, to learn from each other. Um, one of the first things we did was to start online learning that was easily possible to adapt the workshop module of physical Ethnos to an online setting. Um, of course, you, we have to understand that when you want to create acoustic music, you need physical presence. Therefore, just the hope sessions while going a long way in keeping audiences engaged and also giving a sort of digital thrust to Ethno, which wasn't there before. found that very refreshing because many ethnos are cramming a lot of activities of course to get the most value out of the time and so this became an ethno that became very relaxed for musicians who prefer that kind so the as new ethnos come up i think the program is enriched and the new ethnos are also enriched by the experience of the other ethnos <laughs> I've been to Ethno Sweden five times. No, six times. Six times Ethno Sweden, Ethno Germany, uh, Ethno India, and Ethno Sicily. The experience was. Uh, I think kind of magical. Uh, it happens that uh, my background was uh, almost like classical or contemporary music, and when you face to when you face tradition, tradition of uh, other countries, and uh, most of all your country, you are uh, you are set in a mood that uh, has to be like really and really powerful. To the, to the experience of folkloristic music. I started when I was uh, 10 years old and uh, now I'm studying at the Conservatoire of Berlin uh, from Catania and uh, I study the classical music and uh, this is my first experience in uh, folk music. Getting the mobility scholarship was the thing that actually makes me move because with all this situation it was everything very, very uncertain and um, and also as a musician with the uh, COVID the situation was really stressful and, and hard and uh, getting this extra help was the, the thing that makes me move. I think it's important for several reasons and on several different levels. The first is the original idea behind the start, Magnus Beckström, a fiddler and an organizer from Sweden, 
was that he wanted to bring folk music up to the same level of performance and presentation as jazz and Western classical music. There, I think, Ethno over the last 30 years has been very successful because we have now folk and world music orchestras and bands and ensembles as a result of this project. The second reason why it's important is to document the ethnomusicology of our times. Folk music is an evolving tradition and it changes, but it's good at, to take snapshots of it from time to time so that we can pass on these traditions, document these traditions and share that music and joy with the community. On a third level, I think it's also supporting young musicians a lot in their careers, in their confidence, in their soft as well as musical skills. So it's not easily possible for a young musician to put together an ensemble of eight or 10 or 15 different musicians. But at Ethno, when he or she is coming with their tune, they are kind of the boss. They bring that tune, they bring the tradition, they carry that tradition and they teach that tradition as a lineage holder or tradition holder to everybody else. Everybody who learns the tune automatically learns something about the culture and the traditions. I was playing in a Edna festival in Catalonia, I think two years ago. And uh, after that, that idea of Edna, it was in my mind all the time. And I was looking for workshops to improve as a musician and uh, connect with other cultures. And I thought that Edna was the perfect uh, place to sign up. Sharing music with other people is uh, all I want for my musical career. And uh, I, I think it's a very important thing to, uh, to grow up also as a musician. It's very different uh, from uh, Ethno Estonia, of course, because uh, we are in this very small group. Uh, we are basically a band, and uh, and I'm also um, like traveling and uh, enjoying the beautiful nature, and uh, and I think we. I really want to, to experience Ethno again, for sure. Uh, but I really loved this experience of um, being in a small group uh, we, where you, you have much more space to, like, to think uh, of, uh, about the details of the arrangements and to create more intimacy, more, more connection to each person, uh, which is something that was uh, achieved very fast, very easily. Very magical week. I've learned so many things. And during all the workshops, during the arrangements, connecting with musicians, playing this music all around Europe and, and India, it was super nice. So I think that it, this is kind of a first step into this world that I, it's a path that I'm just starting to walk. I think. Sometimes I sing, sometimes I play table. I compose for tables. I compose for ensemble, 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 ensemble table orchestra. Also, I think um, for many experience, experiences, many experiences I've had at Ethnos has been more of like interacting with the different personalities and people from different music and cultures and uh, countries, and just getting to know them and kind of just you 
you learn more about the world in a <laughs> in a, a way that I don't think is like. Yeah, I think it's a really cool way to uh, to get to know the world. <laughs> All musicians have that support. Some people feel like they're musicians and they may not have support in their social milieu or in their academic institutions. In such a situation, I think ethno and ethno activities play a key role. More and more we see that it's not just the summer camps, but we also have camps at other times in the year. We also have meeting points of ethno musicians and we also have workshop activities going through the year. All of these are giving musicians an opportunity to meet and interact. And the networking is quite crucial for them to grow as musicians, but also to form bands and to form projects, to start traveling. When they go to an ethno and they meet another musician, let's say from Argentina, maybe they plan a project for the next summer and they do something in duo, or they add two or three musicians that they met at ethno. What I found here was a, a magical connection to all the people and uh, in this particular situation of uh, pandemic emergency, to be a part of a group, to be part of, uh, to be a part of uh, something close, uh, hugging, uh, joking, playing, sweating, sweating together, is I think the most important things to not uh, be a solipsistic person. Yeah.